your hat. Well, hello everyone and welcome to our daily live stream. I am thrilled to have Greg Savage with me here today from Sydney. Welcome, Greg. Hello, Catherine, nice to see you. Yes, you too. So um, as you guys can see, we've got a little bit of a delay here, so just bear with us. Um, I wanna introduce you very quickly to Greg. Uh, he brings over 40 years of expertise in the recruiting and staffing industry. Uh, he cut his teeth at a search firm in Australia and has worked, uh, he's run four businesses of his own all over the world. Um, and today works at the Savage Truth and is uh, active in 14 different companies and also does consulting and training all over the world. So uh, Greg, welcome, thrilled to have you. And we're just gonna have a little chat today about the current global situation and what you recommend for recruiters to not just survive, but to actually thrive in the middle of this. So welcome. Thank you, Catherine. It's unusual circumstances for us to be having this chat, but I look forward to uh, sharing any ideas I might have. Wonderful. So kind of a fun backstory. Uh, Greg and I actually worked together, but didn't know it at the time. Uh, he was international CEO of Aquent for about 10 years. And I was in the Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota branch in sales at Aquent for two years. So we overlapped a little bit professionally. Um, but before we dive into the current economy and recruiters, I've got a couple of very, very important questions for you. Uh, first of all, Spear or KWV, wines from South Africa. What's your preference there? And <laughs> secondly, do you own a zebra? <laughs> You've got to remember, uh, Catherine, that I left South Africa in December 1978, right? So while I have been back and I still have uh, a sister living there, I actually can talk to you more about uh, Australian wines, which we should set up another seminar about. And do I own a zebra? No, afraid not. Never owned any uh, exotic yes. animals. So you're telling me that I've been lying to people for 20 years. I do own a zebra because when I married my husband from South Africa, we got zebras as wedding presents. So um, not everybody who was born in South Africa owns one. But anyway, okay. Last question before we dive into the heat of it. What's it like working for your brother? And is it true that you forget his birthday every year? <laughs> mm. I don't work for my brother. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's uh, a mistake. No, I don't work for my brother or with my brother even. Um, we've done occasional what? dual speaking uh, with gigs. Uh, so no, your researcher lets you down there. Uh, I've never forgotten his birthday. I've never forgotten his birthday. He has forgotten mine once uh, and uh, called me the next day, but uh, it was a magnificent day because it gives me so much material to tease him with. So no. Yeah, so I, I definitely know you don't work for him. Um, I meant to say work with him. I have seen that you've oh. spoken uh, with him in the past, but that little note about the birthdays came from him. So you can uh, punish him later for that. Okay, so recruiters, you, oh. after 40 years in the recruiting industry, you have clearly survived a lot of tough global economic situations. And while we've never seen a coronavirus global pandemic like this, You've certainly seen stock market dives, unemployment go through the roof. What is your the number one thing that you would like to say to recruiters today about this current climate? The number one thing I'd say to them is we will recover. We will come out of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, my experience of past recessions and while they are structurally different for the reasons we know, is that opportunities abound. I don't think we're going to snap back to some massive economic growth uh, anytime soon, but there will be opportunities. And the recruiters who come through this, who have the resilience to come through this, and who can build stronger relationships, believe it or not, in adversity, which is possible, um, the, uh, the opportunities for those people to thrive, both at an individual level and a company level are huge. And I've got plenty of stories 
uh, about recruitment companies that I've been through recessions with and recruiters who've come out the other side and, and who've thrived. So uh, I, I guess there's two messages. One is we will recover. And two is if you have the resilience and do the right thing through this time, then you position yourself for great advantage when the recovery comes. I'm quite, quite frankly, I'm walking testimony to that. I started a search firm 14 years ago and two years later, um, you know, we, we had a global recession and my income went down to zero. And I, I got to tell you, um, it took me it took me a couple of months, quite frankly. I wish I had you in my life back then. I should have been listening to you. Um, it took me a couple of months to stand back up again and figure out what to do. Um, and when I did, I then followed the advice that you're giving to recruiters right now, which is to take advantage of this opportunity to stand out and, and do goodwill and help people, um, help your clients in new and unusual ways and help the market. And so we did that at Arbez. And one, one thing that we saw, you know, our phone was ringing off the hook. Clearly with recruiters right now, people want their help and you can't possibly help everybody all at once. And so we started creating online tools and online courses. And quite frankly, we reinvented our business and we haven't gone back to doing search. So we are now an online university. We do consulting and we help uh, individuals get more money, freedom and fun out of work. And we also help uh, companies do a more effective job of, of recruiting. So anyway, the goodwill thing that doing good in the community led us to a new business model that has been incredibly successful for us. Um, there were two things in one of your blogs recently. Uh, by the way, if, if those of you that are watching have not signed up for the Savage Truth blog, do it. If you haven't read his book, The Savage Truth, do it. And lastly, pay close attention to his crisis toolbox. So tell us a little bit about your crisis toolbox, Greg. Well, Catherine, um, I, I advise, uh, prior to this crisis, I was on the board of 12 recruitment companies and I'm invested in others. So I spent all my time, a lot of my time, talking to owners of recruitment companies and um, talking to recruiters. Of course, when this crisis hit, I was full on uh, advising, discussing, strategizing with, uh, with these organizations on how to, how to recalibrate. And as you know, as you mentioned, I've had my blog. I blog typically every two weeks. But I decided that this is a time to collaboration. This is a time for sharing. It's all back against the wall. It's all shoulders to the wheel, if you want to put it that way. And there's no time to worry about who our competitors are and all that sort of silly, inconsequential stuff. So I uh, decided that I would share not only the experience of many recessions, um, which is useful, but also... Uh, the learnings I'm having day to day about the conversations I'm having with people and the strategies we come in. It's a very fluid situation. You know, it's changing uh, day by day. And each country, uh, the governments are making different rules and regulations. And so it's extremely challenging for a business owner on top of declining revenue. So I decided I would um, share everything. And I'm probably blogging two or three times a week. I'm also doing a lot of webinars and uh, podcasts, which I'm sharing. And then I thought I'd just put it into one sort of updatable, uh, well, simply it's a blog, but I'm updating it every, every time. And, and I'll probably put this, if it's recorded, up on there as well. So that allows people to go back to just one location for all the information. And I, I'm not saying it's the last word but at all on, on how to deal with it, but there are a lot of fabulous ideas in there. Only a small number of them come from me, but there's a lot of very good ideas and I'm just sharing them as, as they happen as I learn them, so that the community can benefit. So that's what the toolbox is, and it's, it's, on my, it's on my blog there. Yeah, and it's magnificent. I mean, just a taste for the folks that are listening in. Um, you know, my COVID-19 strategy discussions framework, um, what recruitment owners are doing right now all over the world, uh, video interviews with RCSA. Um, yeah, so it's just unbelievable. The seven C's of leadership in a crisis is a webinar that you did. Um, so it really... Yeah. For years, you, in my opinion, you've been the best resource online for recruiters, and you are. This time is no different. So, thank you for everything you're doing to help um, everyone out there. So, 
I'd love for you to talk right. a little bit in the middle of all this, while people are trying to keep their businesses running, keep their families safe and keep their families fed, uh, you, you've thrown up a couple of ideas. And, and some of my favorite, one of my favorites is this idea of Bren engagement, which is a marriage between building your brand by useful and generous engagement. And that right now is one of the best things recruiters can do. So tell us a little bit more about this idea of Bren engagement. Well, I adapted it from uh, a previous concept, which I used the phrase brand engagement, but it was for, it was to try and explain to recruiters that when you're building your brand online, which recruiters are typically not very good at, you've got to broadcast content, but that's not enough. You need to um, move it into engagement. You know, you're trying to make contacts with people and ultimately you want to turn those online uh, engagements into offline communication, to telephone, maybe even meeting people, uh, et cetera. So that was brain engagement. But now what I'm saying is, uh, you know, what, what, what I'm noticing is that uh, a lot of owners of recruitment companies and a lot of recruiters are stuck. They're not sure what to do because it's such a unique situation. We are literally at home. Our clients are at home. Our candidates are at home. And there is a kind of a temptation or a possibility to go into a state of sort of a frozen state where, where not much is happening. That would be the worst thing to do, to go back into your cave. I've heard people say, let's sit this out, uh, let's hibernate. I think that's the wrong approach. I think actually we're fortunate with the technology we have that I don't think you should do that. So the, uh, the brain engagement is to build your brand and you're going to do that by, well, you're obviously doing it right now, but you, you know, I'm not expecting everyone to go and do a live stream, but you can certainly do it by putting out content, by engaging with other people's content, uh, by trying to help. I, th I think, you know, I've said this long before this crisis came along, that the secret to success on social media isn't going into it to say, what can I get? It's actually going into to say, what can I give? Generosity is, in fact, the foundation point of building your brand. Now, I'm not asking everyone to go around with altruistic long-term goals, but if you are going on social media to help, to inform, to share, to connect people, to support people, uh, you will find that uh, the engagement follows. And, and I'm, I'm suggesting that, uh, that part of what a recruiter should do, even if you're a very junior recruiter, you can do this. You have a LinkedIn profile. Potentially, you're on, uh, you're on, you're on Twitter. You, you can blog on LinkedIn. You can write articles. And they don't have to be earth shattering. You know, you don't have to write some magnificent piece. It can just be a small, I think you should not be frivolous either. There's too much of that. But, but if you've got an idea, if you have an experience, um, then this is worth sharing. It's also worth going around looking for other people's good ideas, sharing and commenting on those. And, and that way you will keep visible, you'll build uh, online relationships. And amazingly, over a period of time, not that you should expect it to happen overnight, over a period of time that will translate into incoming inquiries and conversations that will, could lead to, to business or uh, referrals, recommendations. And uh, I strongly suggest, I call it brand engagement because I want people, you've got to start by, by, by building brand, by broadcasting, by content, but it's not just pumping out your opinion everywhere. It, it is also engaging and sharing and uh, uh, listening. I mean, listening <laughs> You don't see a lot of listening on social media, but it's a very important part of it. Actually, listen to other people's point of view and build a conversation around that. That's what it means, Catherine. Absolutely. And it, that's how I survived and actually came out stronger on the other side of the recession. It's definitely what we're doing here. We're collaborating with people that are in similar spaces. And I want to remind all of the recruiting firm owners and recruiters that your um, your clients, many of them are going to be candidates here for a while, for the next few months, maybe the next year. So that back and forth, what you're doing right now to do good out there and, and build your brand and, and help people will come back in spades. People are noticing they're paying attention. And so um, maybe just pick one thing. The easiest low-hanging fruit is just to take the phone calls and the questions that you're getting one person asks you a question on a Monday, you can turn that one question into a quick little blog or grab somebody else's great article. The Savage Truth has a lot of them. Um, you know, grab that and share that. So if you're not a good writer, if you don't have time, just become good at sharing really meaningful content. So thank you for that. Um, I know I want to well, be sensitive well, Catherine, to your time sorry, here. Uh, I know there's a, sorry, I know there's a, 
I know there's a delay, so we, I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I apologize. But um, your, your advice there is, 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 is really good. Um, if you go to the blog I've launched today, it is, it is simply a cut and paste, and I acknowledge it in my blog, of an email I received from somebody in the UK telling me, an owner of a recruitment company, um, who wrote me a long, long email explaining her COVID-19 plan for survival. And it was very lucid. It was very interesting. So I had a chat to her about that. And then I said, can I reproduce this? And she said, sure. So I just shared it and acknowledged her um, because there is something from the trenches. It's a, it's a woman running a 10-person recruitment company in London. She developed a plan. She's given some examples of how it's working. She sent it to me. But what if... What a selfish act it would be to keep that information. I mean, really, I needed to share it, which I've done. You know, so it's gone to 17,000 subscribers today. And if it's like, if it's like a normal blog, 10,000 people would have read it by tonight. But I'm just sharing somebody else's information because it's valuable uh, and it's good content. Right. You know, so, uh, it, it works for me too because it's good content and um, it's real. I mean, this woman thought it up last week and she's doing it today. And that's what people need. They need... Um, practical, uh, real information, not, not kind of superficial, esoteric commentary. We need to know what to do today in this crisis. Yeah, and I just want to kind of wrap things up and share a couple of the favorite things that I've, I've pulled from your uh, blogs and your crisis toolbook. Just super simple things for firms and recruiters to do. Think about what your clients need right now. Um, they're about to get buried with candidates and not have time to sort through them. So you may start to offer some new services, managing their hiring process, pre-screening of candidates, um, those sorts of things, reference checking, onboarding, virtual onboarding. You probably have clients who have never interviewed anybody virtually ever in their life. You could create a little service there to help them do virtual interviews. Um, on the individual recruiter side, you know we definitely have recruiters listening in today who if they haven't gotten laid off, they're maybe working straight commissions and, and don't know where that money's coming from next. I wanna let them know um, that there is an opportunity right now to make some money if you have the appetite for it and the bandwidth to get paid to write resumes, to do career coaching. You're going to do some of it for free. It's what we do, but I will tell you that our Bez, we started monetizing it and we started creating solutions online. If you're interested in that, we've got an affiliate program we can do shared revenue. You can make some money by referring people to our online courses for job seekers and consultants. Um, put some money in your family's pocket. Help people without spending an hour giving free coaching. So anyway, if you're interested in that, you can send an email to us. Uh, just send an email, affiliate at ourbez.com, and we'll get back to you. Um, what about with you? So Greg, you have tremendous resources for people. Would you say the very best way for them to get help from you right now is that crisis toolback box and your blog? Yeah, look, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm sure there's lots of other great resources. I, I would encourage people probably not to, to write to me and email me with a specific question, uh, only because I'm getting over 100 a day and it's hard to manage. Uh, I, will, I will answer them, but the first port of call would be to go to the last 12 or 13 articles on the blog subscribe to my blog because I'm only sending out material about what the, the current crisis. Um, and on the blog, you will also see any, uh, there's, there's a tab for videos and podcasts and they're all updated there as well. That's in the toolbox too. Um, if you, if uh, I, I'm going to mention my book, but not to plug it commercially, I've actually, you know, it's quite an irony, Catherine, you may have read that it, uh, six months ago in Australia, we had a horrific bushfire crisis and uh, most of the country was on fire and hundreds of people died and billions of dollars of property were lost and billions of animals were lost. That, that we thought was the worst thing that could happen to our country in a hundred years. And, and then this came along. Um, the reason I mentioned it is all the sales of my book, all the proceeds are, I'm donating to the Australian bushfire fund. So I'm not plugging my book for commercial reasons. I don't make anything out of it anyway, but it is full of stories of recessions past. And, and, and there's a lot of tips. I mean, it's everything I've learned about being a recruiter in 40 years. So um, that might be something that people could, could dip into as you've probably got a bit more time on your hands than you anticipated. 
Um, and then lastly, we've got a free tool for you today. Um, we've talked about branding and engagement online. And Greg mentioned it, most recruiters do not have very good social media presence. And so we're giving you guys as a gift today, our LinkedIn profile booster. I literally walk you through how to freshen up your profile, how to get on brand and the kind of results that recruiters have had. Sarah got three brand new clients in three days just by following our little uh, workbook. So anyway, that's free for you. It's in the description um, of this live stream and you can just click and get that uh, free to help you with that brand engagement uh, right now. So as we wrap things up, Greg, thank you, thank you, thank you for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule. And um, we're thinking of you. I know you're thinking of everyone around the world. We are in this together. And if we can just link arms and, and move through this together, we will come out of this thing faster and stronger. So thank you for sharing your wisdom today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Catherine. And um, of course, my best wishes to everybody just to get through this with good health and without uh, great financial loss. But as far as recruiters are concerned, um, take my advice. It, it, it's easy for me to say I know, but try to keep connecting. Yes, you want to look for jobs to fill, and that should be your first uh, ambition. Secondly, build a pipeline of jobs down the track. But thirdly, just uh, just put good, goodwill equity as a phrase on the top of mind, which simply means connecting with people. Uh, how are you? Are you okay? What's your plans for the future? How can I help? Giving advice. Um, all of that, you will be remembered as the recruiter who stood out in, in the tough times. And when the good times return, uh, then people will connect with you. So um, I know it's tough and it might be six or months or longer, but this is what we've got to do. And it will be a test of our resilience. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Thank you. Have a very good rest of the day. Thanks, Greg. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.